Hey guys, Clint Coons here, and in this video, we're going to discuss when is the right time to create your own management entity for your rental real estate. Okay, this question comes up a lot when I'm dealing with people who are just getting started in real estate, or maybe they've been investing for 20 plus years. They're wondering, do I need a management entity? Why would I set one up? Well, it really comes down to consolidation of control, how you deal with your tenants, what you want people to know about your relationship to those properties. For example, when I grew up, my father was an avid real estate investor and everyone, all of his tenants, that is, they knew he was the owner of the properties because he would let them know in no uncertain terms. Yeah, I own this property and I manage it. Now, granted, he liked to do that. But there are certain people like myself, I don't want people to know that I own the property. I don't want the tenants to know that I am the property owner. And if I was dealing with those tenants, I might want to do so under the um, guise that I am just the property manager and they're dealing with the PM and not the actual owner themselves. And I don't need to go into details as to why that may be something you should consider. But the question is, when do you bring in this management entity and what type of entity should it be? So. I've worked with real estate investors before that will come to me with a structure that looks like this right here. We have a couple uh, LLC set up uh, right here. They got two LLCs with uh, two properties and they're thinking, hey, is now the time for me to create a, a, a property management entity that would manage these two properties for, for myself? So rather than having each of the LLCs, dealing directly with the tenants. I'm gonna set up a, a property management entity up here. And this could be an LLC or it could be a traditional corp, corporation. Typically, I'm going to set up a limited liability company up here as the property manager, but I may choose to treat it as a C corp for tax purposes or disregarded depending on what my strategy is. So what do I mean by that? Well, if you're not interested in pulling money off of you, that is out of your personal income tax bracket, and you're not looking for, for tax benefits of using a corporation, then make it an LLC that's disregarded for federal tax purposes. So it doesn't have to file a tax return. So if tax planning is not your concern, it should be a disregarded LLC. If you're thinking about getting money out of your personal tax bracket off your 1040, you're thinking, hey, I'm gonna pay up some management fees so that's less income that's taxable to me, then consider treating that entity as a C corporation for federal tax purposes. So that's the first question you want to ask yourself if, when you do set this up, how is it going to be taxed? C or disregarded, all right? And that is, as I just stated, dependent upon what your motivations are. Now, the second thing we're gonna look at is when do you bring this type of entity to bear here? Well, if taxes are your concern, and you're thinking, hey, I'm gonna bring on this management company to reduce my, my taxes. Well, doesn't make sense when you have two properties. I would say no, it doesn't make a lot of sense here to use a property management entity in this context because there isn't enough justification for tax reasons. Again, I'm talking about taxation to make this play out. And if you're wondering, what am I referring to here? So let's take this LLC. This property generates $900 a month it has a $600 mortgage on it. You figure uh, $100 just set aside. So really what I'm sitting on cash flow on a monthly basis is $200. Now, what does that mean to me from a tax standpoint? Well, there's enough depreciation coming off this property that will eat up all of this $200. So from a tax standpoint, I'm not paying taxes uh, on this, on this uh, property here, or maybe a little bit, um, at the end of the year. So if I was considering paying up a, a management fee up to this entity, how much could I truly charge? Oh, uh, maybe I can get by charging a hundred dollars a month up here as a management fee. So if I moved a hundred dollars a month up to that entity that I have set up there, that's taxed as a C corp, because I'm looking for a tax play here, that corporation is going to make $1,200. So is that enough money? from a tax standpoint to justify putting that, going through this entire setup uh, of, of creating this entity? My answer to you is probably not, because at the end of the day, how much am I really saving? Well, you factor back in depreciation, you do the numbers, 
you might be only saving yourself about 20, 30, maybe $80 in taxes. And if that's what I'm saving, to me, that doesn't move the needle enough to justify having to run a separate entity. So if you're looking for it from a tax standpoint, because you wanna reduce the income that's coming down to you, like I'm showing you here. So rather than showing the 200 profit, you're only gonna show 100 profit. Well, you better have more of these structures set up. Uh, I think at a minimum, you're gonna to wanna to have at least, uh, going across here, at least eight to 10 to make it, have it make sense with sufficient cash flow there. That is your cash flow can't be eaten up by your mortgage and your expenses. You gotta have sufficient cash flow to make that make sense from a tax standpoint. So if that's not my motivation, my motivation happens to be, I just don't want my tenants to know that I'm the person that owns the property. Well, or you wanna consolidate where they're paying their rents. Then maybe it makes sense, of course, to set up this entity as a disregarded, because we're not looking at it from tax standpoint. All we wanna do is have this entity here dealing with my tenants. So when I go to lease the property out, I'm leasing the property to the tenants. This company is dealing with the tenants as the PM. It's collecting the rents on a monthly basis, handling all of that uh, on behalf of these LLCs up here, but it's really not making any, it's not making any profit because we're not set, we have not set it up for that reason. So if I had two properties, would it make sense for me to create an entity to deal with the tenants rather than having each LLC deal with them? Probably not, okay? And again, you're only gonna do this typically if you're self-managing. If you're not self-managing, then that even makes less of a reason why you'd wanna set up this structure. So I have you know, clients that have multiple LLC set up and they, they like to create a management entity to deal with the tenants and have all the money come into one account and they do all their accounting up here at this level right here. Then they make distributions down either to these LLCs or directly down to here. And you can catch one of my other videos on that as well when I talk about um, dealing with property managers with your structures. So if I was looking at it in your context, one property definitely doesn't make sense. Two properties, I still, I'd have to uh, question whether or not I'm gonna do it. But when you get up to five, six, seven and more, then it could make some sense for you to have this. And of course, the reason why you're gonna do this, number one, um, is to for tax, well, that's one of the reasons, tax planning or um, for consolidation uh, over, your, over all the rentals. And basically the third one would be, so uh, tenant issues. So the tenants don't know who is actually the owners of the property. If you're gonna create anonymity here, it may make sense to have that property management entity up top. So it just all plays into that overall anonymity structure that people don't know that you're the actual owner of that deal. All right, guys, hope you liked this video. It made some sense to you about when you should use a property management entity. If you like the video, hit the like button and be sure to subscribe as well if you're not already a subscriber and be sure to check back next week as we've got more important videos for you on tax and asset protection planning. Take care.